here on Kiwi. Let's talk gaming now and uh, Gerard's experiences in New York City. Gerard Campbell from Stuff.co.nz, Game Junkie NZ on Twitter. Good morning, Gerard. Good morning, Memo. How are you? Or I suppose, yeah, good, thanks. Um, Good afternoon, good evening, good night, whatever. Um, Jet lag, uh, Gerard, this morning. (laughs) What what day is it? I'm not sure. Yeah. Um, Now... Um, you, you went over to New York for a um, a Connect, an Xbox Connect event over there, um, but it was quite a specific event, wasn't it? Yeah, it was. Um, it was called Connect for Kids, um, and it was a announcement that Xbox were doing that they're really doing a strong focus now. I guess since now that Connect has been in the marketplace for a year or so, you know, just over um, almost a year. Yeah, they're doing a really strong push on um, targeting kids with it. Um, so this Connect for Kids event was specifically targeting, you know, games for Connect that are going to be um, suitable for kids. You know, um, what type of and, games? And, and what type of game? Well, I mean, it's a lot more educational based now. A lot of them. They've, huh. um, the key announcements that they made were, I mean, for starters, they had, you know, they had um, a big sort of room booked out at, at uh, a sort of a building in Hell's Kitchen, which is a neighbourhood in New York, and they had, you know, games like. Games that they had on display were things like uh, Disneyland Adventures, uh, you know, Connect Star Wars, Connect Sports Two. You know, we've seen those, we've heard about those. Yeah. Um, and they also had uh, an, initi- an initiative that they're calling Playful Learning, which is meaning that uh, using gameplay to sort of help kids, um, you know, learn things. Hmm. Um, and the, I guess, I guess the big and the, I just thought just to pull my cord out. The no, big, you're uh, right. That they made. Big announcement that they made was a collaboration that they're doing with uh, Sesame Street and National Geographic. Oh. Um, and the Sesame Street one is called Sesame Street TV, and the Natural, Natural Geographic is Nat Geo TV. And what it is is, um, and I don't know whether all the sort of fine details have been pinned down because, you know, I don't think things going to launch until maybe later of this year or early next year, is that. Um, in collaboration with National Geographic TV and uh, Sesame Street, that they're going to be doing like a season of interactive shows. So, you know, using your Kinect camera, so I'm assuming that, uh, you know, say take Sesame Street, that it's going to be run through, um, you know, it'll be over Xbox Live. Yeah. And if you're watching an episode of Sesame Street, at certain points you can interact with the show. Wow. And so some some examples that they gave was and, and like the Dave McCarthy who's one of the sort of the head box, head honchos of the family sort of side of Xbox in the US was saying that they're gonna film you know, the production wise that they're gonna film these special interactive sequences alongside the normal filming of the show. So it's not gonna sort of add much production time to it. But what it'll do, like, you know, they showed an example was it was like the scene where you had uh, I think it was Grover was walking along with a box of coconuts and, and Cookie Monster dropped a banana skin and Grover slipped over and dropped all his coconuts. And at that point, the kid could wave or clap or whatever and Grover asked him to throw back the coconuts into the box. Right. So, you know, you'd, you'd pick up these imaginary coconuts and throw them into the box and every time you've got one in, you'd count one, two, and up to five. So it's very, you know, we all, most of us know Sesame Street, you know, mm. those of us have a certain age so it's going to be using those interactivity to sort of help your counting help your learning help that sort of thing um so i mean i think i think the cool thing is that you know it's actually using this wee bit of interactivity between the shows so if you're watching the show normally on the tv you've just got the standard show but if you're watching it through xbox then you've got these interactive situations which is pretty cool and the national geographic one is uh using a guy called I think Casey Anderson, I think his name is. We probably we don't know him here, but he seems to be some sort of naturalist in the US who go out, out into the wild and, and, and sort of, you know, teaches kids about the wild, you know, and the environment. Yeah. And at cer- certain times during this, you know, there was one scene that he's got a this pet bear that he adopted when the uh, bear was a cub. Um, and he's talking about how bears forage for food in the wild. Um, and when you see certain symbols pop up on the screen, you wave. And then you can actually start playing this game where, you know, a bear head gets superimposed on your head, and you have to scratch for worms or bees huh. or eat bees, and that's something. So it's just really pushing that interactive um, element a wee bit. So I mean, I think that those two are something really quite exciting. Wow, the fact it, that it's something 
different. It really, um, you know, takes it to a whole new level. Remember, remember the whole play school thing where they, you know, that you're sitting there and then the the person on play school will say, "Can you jump up and down with me?" You know, we're going to do yes. this little dance or whatever. And and I guess yeah. as the presenter, you've got to assume that the kid on the other side of the TV is actually doing that. But now. The, 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 the game or the, the show itself, I guess it would come on a disc, I suppose, what can, can actually detect whether or not you are doing what is required. It's, um, yeah, well, I mean, the, and the thing is, too, is that they've said that they sort of haven't decided on the delivery details, so I'm not sure whether it's okay. going to be you know, streamed, streamed over live or it's going to be disc. But they've also incorporated into these sort of interactive segments that, of course, they've had to allow for um, what if the kid doesn't actually respond you know so if yeah you know Gro- grover says oh can you throw me the coconuts or whatever the kid's falling don't... asleep <laughs> yeah the kid's falling asleep and doesn't do anything then you know grover will say oh are you there are you there sort of thing so <laughs> there's 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 obviously been efforts made that they've got to sort of think about too that you know not all kids perhaps are going to jump in and and start doing things mm. and also too you know one of the um sort of moving aside from those is, is that i managed to bump into tim schaefer who's perhaps one of the most well-known game designers around who did, you know, Brutal Legend and, and you know, he's in um, a lot of uh, trenched and stacking, you know, those, uh, those Xbox LA games. Yeah. He was he was there with his company Double Fine. I'm not sure whether he was actually there officially as an interview subject, but I managed to talk to him. Oh, cool. Um, because he's, he's involved with the Sesame Street TV um, work and his company Double Fine has done once Upon a Monster, which is the Connect Sesame Street sort of based game, and a new one that he's made called Happy Action Theatre. And he was telling me that it's a Connect game for kids, but there are no rules, you know, they can't fail, they can't die. Hmm. Um, and it's a whole collection of mini games. And he said, you know, when they were testing this, they sort of realised that not all kids are going to be as active as others, you know. So there was one one snow sequence where, you know, you can pick up these virtual snowballs and throw them at people and do whatever. But he said some kids, when they came in testing, some kids just stood there doing nothing. Right. So he said they decided to incorporate into that that if the Kinect camera senses no movement for a certain period of time, uh, that kid's avatar will get encased in ice. So they'll have to actually move on screen, you know, mm. in front of the Kinect to actually break that ice. So he sort of developed things that would sort of help just ease kids into it so um you know i think that it's a good sign that perhaps you know i think for a long time microsoft especially with 360 did, did neglect kids yeah and uh it's you know they're sort of really moving towards that sort of educational side of things for um young kids maybe and well, there's, certainly this is aimed for young kids i think you know that's sort of right well the, the, uh, five to ten here as a as a young um, gamer and as a dad how do you feel about the idea of games that you can't fail in, or that you know you that that you progress through, but um, there's no sense of sort of um, winning or beating beating the game because you don't you know there is no opportunity to fail. Well, I think for um, you know, and, and, and just an aside, that Tim Schafer was saying something, something that he decided to do this connect game for his daughter because his daughter was young, and a lot of young children have problems with the controller you know with all these buttons and all that sort of thing so yeah. i think if you're getting children into it young it's probably quite good that they don't get put off you know there's nothing worse than giving them here's a game here's a something that you've got to do and then oh you've failed and if you do that continually then they're going to be put off so i think it's good to actually have things where kids can come in play it by their terms play it by their rules so they get familiar with how things work and then you know um as they get older, they're going to want to find more challenges. But I think young kids, if they sort of get put off by things too much mm. and, you know, um, find that they're failing all the time, they're probably going to be turned off a wee bit by it. So I think that it's actually good for young children that they're actually, here's things that they can sort of work through at their own pace, at their own time, and uh, not be put off by it. So I think, yeah, I think I think it is a good idea. You know, of course, gamers like us, we want a challenge. So we mm. want, you know, we want, you, you know, part of failure as a gamer is that you sort of, learn new strategies on how you can um, tackle things so that's good but I think for young kids yeah I think it's good that they don't get dis- disenchanted with it from an early age mm. okay well cool that sounded like a really um, worthwhile event um, outside of um, the Connect event you know, what was your, um, your, your your number one New York experience as a new visitor to the city 
new visitor. Wow. I mean, it's so, so much. Mm. It's a huge city, you know. Um, we were there for a week and we only saw a fraction of it. But the most exhilarating was a New York cab ride. For sure. <laughs> yeah. For sure. I mean, we think we know what traffic, you know, peak air traffic is. It's not. You know? <laughs> yeah. we, we know nothing about peak air traffic. And these guys floor it and they squeeze in the gaps that you just, you close your eyes thinking that's not a gap that you can go into. Um, and they do, but you know, it's it's an amazing city. You know, mm. things like things like Times Square at eleven o'clock at night. Yes, yeah. looks like daytime. It's just incredible. Did you see any of the busy. Occupy Wall Street stuff? Yes, I did. Took some photos of those. Huh. It was quite amazing. Uh, it was quite amazing that the, uh, you know, how big that protest is, and, yeah. and 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 how long it's been going for, and a lot of armed police in that area too. Right. Which was, um, Bit disconcerting, but yeah, certainly down by that Wall Street area was um, a huge big area of where those protests are, and you know, it, it looks as though they'll be there for a while. I think. Yeah. That uh, things are going, but no, it's a brilliant city. You know, one of those, one of those once in a lifetime cities. You know. Indeed. Amazing. Sounds like a cool experience. Well, thanks very much for telling us about some of it, um, Gerard. Uh, people will obviously be able to read some more um, up at stuff.co.nz in the Game Junkie yes. section there later on. And uh, also yes. on Twitter as well, twitter.com forward slash Game Junkie NZ. See you, mate. Indeed. Thank you. Bye.